Welcome to Emerald Innovation Insights. I'm Neil Cameron, and today we're discussing additive manufacturing, often called 3D printing. Joining us uh, today is Luda Kopakina. She's a pillar of the DSM venturing team and a prolific investor in this space. Luda, welcome. Thank you. So uh, what I'd like to begin with is, you know, a comment that additive manufacturing has come a really long way from the foundational IP from the mid 80s, right? When, when, it, when it was just a curiosity photopolymerization technology patents, which were uh, developed in, in Japan to where we are right now, there's been a, a huge path. And I would argue that in the last maybe even five years, there have been some pretty powerful paradigm shifts. But I'd be curious to get uh, your perspective from the front lines of corporate investing in this space. What's changed or what is changing in additive manufacturing today? So we started the additive manufacturing unit within DSM in 2019. Why? Uh, because we see that there is a potential right now to get 3D printing into industrial manufacturing, not just a toy production uh, manufacturing. The reason being that materials were at the core of that and there was not enough of, it, of them. And I, there's still not enough. The broader set needs to be created. But certain materials exist that can be 3D printed. And there are printed technologies that now exist to, um, to also 3D print in time at cost that is required for industrial production. Those are the changes that are um, still not fully there, that will need to be accelerated and the digital platforms and the like will need to be created digital tools to accelerate that uh, trend. But it is possible now. That's excellent. I, yeah, I, I, would, I would tend to agree. I think that, you know, this has been sitting in gestation for so long, but there's, there's, there, are, there are important drivers that are making this whole, whole space move finally now and you know to the to your comment about we need more deals to look at i would you know you and i have in parallel looked at lots of deals we haven't looked at a deal together yet in, in, in a co-diligence process but in parallel i know that you and i have looked at, at, a, at a number of deals and i've frankly fallen in love with virtually all of them right it's not easy it's not hard to to fall in love with additive manufacturing technologies um we've been challenged with finding opportunities that can deliver uh a path to a venture grade exit uh, in our time frame. Right? As an institutional investor, our time frame is quite short. Your time frame as a strategic investor is a little longer. Um, you found five that you fall in love with enough that you you guys want to put the DSM brand on it and say, you know, this did, we we we're we're invested here. Uh, any you'd like to highlight? Maybe maybe you'd like to give us a quick little summary of what caught your attention with the five you did. Right. So. Um... Yes, there are five, two of them in the material space. One of the major needs in the 3D printing market is soft material, but soft materials that are not brittle, that essentially creating, taking polyurethanes that are good, but not 3D printable. So chromatic specializes in that. Then there is adaptive that challenges the uh, materials like of carbon, and, uh, and produces materials that are even better than carbon, but they can be produced at the speed of industrial production versus the carbon that has uh, certain constraints on the time to print. So we have the chromatic and adaptive uh, investments that are in the soft space that is very needed. 60% um, of, um, of the labor and time goes into post-processing, not a very well-known fact. 60% of the cost of the part, it's a lot. And so we invested in a company called AMT out of UK that takes, automates it and actually makes the part shine and, uh, and, and reduces the, um, the problems with it essentially. So it's a, it's a tremendous technology that we really, really got into this very much. Then we believe in certain verticals for 3D printing. Uh, we, we think that shoes, athletic shoes will be 3D printed. And so uh, we invested in Voxel that has a particular technology with soft materials and they are creating an industrial platform specifically for printing the top of the athletic shoe in one go. Um, then we invested in Ingbit, 
that's a, a future of, um, of uh, I think, industrial production. Their claim to fame, they're out of MIT, and their claim to fame, they're doing quality control at each layer as it's being printed, so they can adjust, right? And so they can print in minute detail very fast. Uh, what's the fourth one? So, uh, yeah, so we, we that, those are the differentiated ways. Yeah, they go in sync with our, um, our belief of where 3D printing will actually bloom. Yeah, I, so I, you know, I'm a materials guy, so obviously you're, you're, you're tugging on my heartstrings if you're going to talk about interesting materials being used in additive manufacturing. The, the kind of deal that I get tired of is the one where the companies are showing me pictures, showing me copies of the Eiffel Tower. Uh, and, you know, I don't need to see more copies of the Eiffel Tower. What I need to see are parts which actually have function. Uh, and the, and the, um, the value proposition of tailoring a customized part for the interface with the human body is a great 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 opportunity i can entirely subscribe to your thesis of of shoes right i mean it, it's a it's a it's a, it's not necessarily totally obvious but having shoes that actually fit your feet is a is a strong market uh, and quite an interesting an interesting place to be let's just change gears a little bit quickly here because you know one of the things that we need to see and you need to see are exits right it's all well and good to see interesting technologies and it's even better if you can see technologies that can scale um, but if you're exit oriented, if you're interested in a financial return for an investment, you need to see a path out. Uh, and there was a wave of exits eight years ago or so, but it's been relatively quiet since. Any, uh, any views on that from the front lines? Any, do you see any exits in the, in the near term that you'd like to highlight? Um, yeah, I think the industry is rethinking itself. Mm -hmm. um, I think that, see, what, because of the fact that materials and processing and the application have to come together as a three-legged stool, a lot of the printing companies were trying to do way too much, right? They were trying to do the material, the printing, and be knowledgeable in all the applications. And there are also the service bureaus that were created. So um, it, it, it is going to actually go in, in different directions, I think. And that's maybe one of the stalling factors for the exits because the industry needs to understand where is it that, um, that the focus needs to be for each company. So I'm not really particularly upset about this. And I also hear that, um, that the metal uh, 3D printing uh, are going IPOs and the like, the digital metal. So it, it's, it's, it will be happening. And I think, um, so I, I and, and also as a strategic investor, we nurture these companies and we, we know how to help them to actually get the traction they need to raise the next round to exit very properly. So it's a, it, it's a difficult thing in some sense, but uh, I'm, I, I'm actually very excited about the potential for our portfolio. I, I, I share your enthusiasm for the space and I can't help but tip my hat to your portfolio, neat companies. So let, let's just, uh, for, a, for a final quick little question here, let's talk about tailwinds because one of the things that we need to see for uh, decent exits is rapid growth. Uh, and an unlikely uh, contributor to rapid growth may well be this COVID pandemic in which we are currently living, right? I mean, it has negative impact on health. It has negative impact on global economies. It has negative impact on technology adoption generally. But in additive manufacturing, maybe there's a special case. And I wonder if you, can, if you have any thoughts on how COVID, this current COVID crisis may actually have a positive Im impact on additive manufacturing. So what COVID did for 3D printing is put, put 3D printing on the pedestal and um, demonstrated that it is not a toy and they can print, the 3D printing groups can produce things on demand and very quickly and to the specs of the hospitals. So the first things that were produced were the swabs for testing, then masks were printed. A, lo a lot of those things have, um, have emerged. So we now have um, proud owners who essentially almost two business, new, two business units in uh, DSM supporting Netherlands and Europe for masks and those swabs. But one of um, my portfolio companies, Adaptive, is also working with the hospital on, on those swabs. 
So it's, um, yeah, it is an acceleration and demonstration that 3D printing can actually be industrial and can produce en masse and can produce too quite quickly. So I hope it's a demonstration and there's more, um, more focus on the investment and uh, more technology that will go into 3D printing. Yeah, I hope you're right. I also hope that additive manufacturing demonstrates some real decentralization of manufacturing capabilities for global manufacturers. It should be it should be quite interesting times, and we shall watch it very closely. Perhaps we'll find a deal to, to do together soon. That would make yes, me very happy. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Luda, thank you so much for joining us for this edition of Emerald Innovation Insights. We do appreciate your input. It's been delightful. Thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure.